What is going on managers and welcome back to a brand new episode in the Builder Tactic. Today we're looking at a German team. They've never won the Bundesliga so let's try and rectify that wrong and try and build a tactic that suits them to get them a first Bundesliga title and it's none other than Bayer Leverkusen. Let's get into the video. So as you can see we've just started out as Leverkusen. We're going to try and build a tactic that suits them and hopefully we can try and at least challenge for the Bundesliga with them. The club vision is to pretty much just qualify, get, get to the knockout stage of the Champions League and qualify for the Champions League. So I think that's fourth in the Bundesliga. Yeah, fourth. So they want fourth. I kind of want to sit second or first with this team. That is the aim of this team to try and get them first or second. I would like a Pokal Cup, but that will come hopefully just, yeah, if it comes, it comes. If not, we are more focused on the league than we are anything else. So let's try and get into this, see what we've got, and see what we can build with this side. I don't know why I clicked on tactics. I just want to look at the team first. And as we can see straight off the bat, and this is before I've even done anything, look at all of them center midfielders. There is seven center midfielders there. So I think this one is going to be a heavy Heavy duty on the centre mid. I'm probably going to go only one striker as well. I'm just seeing Schick there, who's probably going to be the only striker for us. We've got a couple injuries. The fact that Wurtz is uh, injured as well is absolutely... Oh, it's gutted. Five to six months. He's absolutely fantastic. He's only 19 as well, and this guy's just going to develop. So, yeah, a little bit heartbroken that he's not going to be part of the team. Well, until the later stages of it. But I'm seeing some players that I already know that are going to be good there. Uh, Palacios, a fantastic player of the ball. He's going to be kind of in a D8, like a DM position, kind of winning the ball back and being able to pass it around. A good ball winner there. We also have Orangus as well. I hope I said that right. Orangus. We... <laughs> I'm going to get butchered in the comments, but you know what to do. Just leave him down there. Another fantastic player, 33 years old. He is gaining on, but his mentals are absolutely phenomenal. He has got the stamina as well, natural fitness, and he can also put a tackle in and pass the ball. So we're seeing a lot of passing of the balls of our players here. Also, we do have Kareem as well, who looks a phenomenal player. Can tackle, can pass the ball, great vision. So... It's going to be interesting to see what we go with here. I'm feeling like two two kind of playmaker type style players and then going for a ball winning midfielder could be the play here. So straight off the bat, in my mind, I'm thinking this. So what I'm thinking is a ball winning midfielder, which would be Palacios who can pass the ball, then a roaming playmaker and an advanced playmaker as well. What this is going to do is... Get the ball into the center where our best passers of the ball are all going to be in there. Every single one of these three players are going to be our best passers of the ball. And that is where the play is going to be coming down to. And this is where the creation is going to be all through these three midfielder players here. That is a phenomenal amount of players that are in that team that look absolutely brilliant. And I feel like they are going to be the ones that are just going to push us forward. So what I'll go with is Palacios there as the ball winning midfielder. Karim there as well as getting forward, and then I'd play Charles there. As you know, I can't really pronounce the surname, so we're going with that. That's what I'm feeling, because I could put words back in to the team as soon as, like, Charles. We could replace him with Charles because he's 33, but there is options there. So we've locked in our three pretty much best players there that we've got into this team, and they are going to be our playmakers, style of football, and with that, I'm going to focus the play through the middle, so everything is focused on them three, and they are the creators of this play. No matter what, we're going to see everything be evolved and come around through them three players. We're going to look at our center offs now as well. The players that are going to be behind them, I kind of already think I know who I'm going to be putting in here as well. And it's probably going to be Tasoba because he is absolutely phenomenal. 16 jumping reach, 14 pace, 14 acceleration, 13 strength. But he does have the 15 tackling and the 14 marking and the 13 heading whilst also having the passing ability of 12, uh, 13 with the dribbling of 12 as well. So I'm going to put him straight in. I don't even need Luke at anyone else. I'm going to put him straight in and I'm going to have a look that the roaming playmaker is there. So he's going to push forward. So I'm going to have him as the ball playing defender just there because he can bring that ball out of play here as well and just slot into this position and then hopefully track back because we're probably going to have Jonathan Tarr there because Jonathan Tarr has got a bit of speed as well. Good jumping reach, good strength, very good strength as well. Can also pass the ball whilst tackling, heading and marking as well. He's just got poor vision so we don't want him much as the ball playing defender because he's just going to get a little bit carried away there and potentially lose it with a poor vision 
We do have another centre off in here though, another good one that is very fast. I don't know why they put him as left back, but to me, he's more of a centre off. Better vision as well than okay, this could be a thingy. He's got better vision than Jonathan Tarr, but I think the jumping reach of Jonathan Tarr is going to be a little bit more dangerous and more effective for us. He also is only 20 as well, so we can develop him into a better player. So for me, Jonathan Tarr comes straight into that team, and we're just going to tell him to kind of just be take fewer risks, as he does have that poor vision. I don't want him getting carried away, and I don't want him just like going for these dangerous passes in the center where it's not really there for him. So we're going to have a look at this left-hand side. We did see Piero there, but we're not going to play him in. We also have St. Graven, who is a little bit better on this wing. He's not very the best at tackling, very good at the tackling, and anticipation is a little bit down there, just a little bit scary, but he can get the ball forward. He can put a good cross in, and he can dribble with it. He's got a great first touch, and passing ability is very strong. So we could use him in that position. Let's just have a look at Baker as well, though, who is a more natural all-round left back he is only 22 years old well so he's got lots to develop so we're going to put baker in there he's just a little bit better than anyone else and got the better mentals as well he can still pass the ball he can run with the ball he can dribble he can cross so he is going to be our left back right there i did have a look at frimpong but i know frimpong is going to be on the right because he's deadly especially with that pace getting forward he's going to be absolutely crucial and with him with that pace there we're leaving jonathan tar we're not playing jonathan tar as the ball playing defender and i'm not going to bring tasoba over to the ball playing defender because i don't want him pushing forward and getting up and him pushing forward as well which is going to leave a little bit of a gap behind this right hand side for the their left tackers to get forward so we're not going to do that and we're just going to play it like that i am going to play him on wing back and i'm going to tell him get forward and get attack and then also i'm going to dribble more often with the ball but i am going to tell him to shoot less often he's not really the best at finishing he's all right at finishing but i'll draw over him to get the ball into the box and whip it in and same with baker over here Let's put him on a wing back, but only on support this time so that he is covering that ball playing defender if he does sneak up a little bit there. We are going to tell him to dribble more, though. We want him to get forward. He can dribble. It. We're going to shoot less often as well, and that is all we're going to do with him. Here we have a lot of choices right now. This left position, this attacking left position right now. We have also got Zengraven, who is, we went through before, but he's not... He's not quite there yet. We do have Hudson Adai on loan who could potentially play on the wing as well. He's got very good pace and dribbling and crossing, so he could be a threat for us there. We also have Diaby who is absolutely rapid on that left-hand side as well. Could be used, could be an absolute threat here for us. We also have Balarabi who is actually out at the time being, but he can be brought into the team. I might use him on the right-hand side there. Mentals are not the best, I'm not going to lie. But also, we do have Holzik, who is absolutely well-known for his FM presence of being a wonder kid. So we could put him in there as well. We've got plenty of players, especially in this attacking range, that can do a lot of damage. I think we're going to go for Diaby on this left-hand side, just before his pace and just so we can get him in there. He's going to be an inside forward. That's going to allow us to over lap with the wing back as well as well as the roaming playmaker getting forward as well then Diaby could cut inside and just play in there for us nice and easily so let's have a look on this right hand side then and see if we're going to play over there Holzik can play there as well he isn't really too known for playing on that side he is right footed so he can play on that side as well we do have Balarabi as well with that pace trying to get forward with a good dribbling and also we do have Hudson Adai as well that can play in both of them positions he's not the best of finisher is Hudson Adai but he can definitely cut in as an inverted winger and try and put some danger on so I'm going to give Hudson Adai a run out for the time being play him on attack and then we're going to have a complete forward right here on support so he drops back and gets involved in it and the striker i think i can only play one person and that is gonna be Schick. Schick looks absolutely phenomenal and can play that complete forward he's got everything about him jumping reach speed strength pace decision making as well work rate's not quite there but it's all right good off the ball as well good dribbling good finishing good first touch good technique as well he's got pretty much everything in his bag so we're going to put Schick in there as well get him involved we do have two other strikers obviously Hozik can play there as well if he really wants to we can play him as a striker and we also do have Asmund who is also a very good player they got from Zenit but he's just his work rate lacks a little bit for me just why I don't want him playing as that complete forward but he can definitely play there as well but that is kind of how we're going to set up for that, guys. It's simple 4-3-3, I'm going to call it. So we have all our plays in there. I can put the goalkeeper. 
and there's only one. It's Hideki who is going to go into that team. You just look at him. He's phenomenal. What pace has he got? So he's got 10 pace. Agility is 14. They've got him as a sweeper keeper. Acceleration 13. You know what? I agree with that. Sweeper keeper on support perfectly for us there. That is the team. That's what we're going to go for. And that's what we're going to do. With also, uh, we're going to go and take more risks. That is perfectly fine as well. I'm going to have him to get further forward as well. Just try and get a little bit more involved in the game. Take more risks. Perfectly fine. Move into the channels as well. And then you are going to hold your position there. Yeah, hold position. Perfectly fine. That's exactly what I wanted from them. Uh, Hudson Adai, we know you can't shoot. So we're going to tell him shoot less often because we don't want him to shoot it more. And then also we are going to have our inside forward to pass a little bit shorter as well. That's all we want him to do. You know what? Because he's sitting there, we're going to have him narrow as well because the, the wing back is going to get over the top of him as well and overlap. Whilst also, we're going to get the roaming playmaker to sit up there as well. With this formation, I'm going to play positive so they can get the ball forward. And now we're going to introduce a little bit of overlapping there. Pass into space purely because of the speed. And we're going to play a very high tempo because the passing ability from this team is absolutely phenomenal. And we're going to... No, I'm going to only tell the players that I want to run at the defenders, run at the defenders. In transition, we're going to regroup and counter. I am going to distribute to the center off for us there. And then also we're going to play as a high block and a high line with a bit of press and distribute prevent distribution for the goalkeeper that's all i want from that team i think that team can do some very very good damage there the focus is going to be for the middle they're going to play to the inverted winger and the inside forward and the complete forward and also we're going to have the overlapping players to create a little bit more space for us there but this team looks like it's going to be locked on it's going to be very strong and i think people are going to get out past on this park with this team and then they're running at the defenders as well with the pace of this team it's going to cause a lot of aggro so let's see how we get on for the season and hopefully this tactic does us some magic so guys we've headed straight to the end of the season Season. and as you can see we have nipped it just right at the end there with one point i can't believe it we've actually tipped bayern and got top of the league this is one of the goals that we were going for as well i would have happily taken second over Dortmund and Bayern, but the fact we actually won a league with Bayer Leverkusen is absolutely astonishing as well. Shit got us actually 25 goals this season for us as well. We had Frimpong, Charles, and also Derabi as well on 10 assists each, which is mad. So everyone is chipping in with the assists of the team as well. Great stuff. Pass completion was the best from the goalkeeper. Not really too fussed about that one as well. And as you can see there, big yellow cards from Plastic John Vitor, which is going to happen. But shit did get most man of the matches for us as well we managed to score 69 goals nice and then we did concede 37 which is quite shocking actually is the seventh best in the league i was actually really shocked by that from us as well so it's interesting to see that considering we won the league and scored the most goals we're actually seventh with conceding and the most possession as well we were 54 percent just six off the likes of Bayern munich as well which is another good result for us to maintain that possession and keep it as well most dribbles were in there with 582 which we had some very strong plays in there to try and get the ball down and run with it as well frame pong in there now are two wingers of uh ballarabi as well and holzik and We've got plenty of players that can dribble with it as well. But as you can see there, conceded by only 21. The fact that these have only conceded this is absolutely mental. But it just shows just how good we were by maintaining this tactic and actually gaining a lot of creativeness to creating the goals that we can get there. We actually got 12 clean sheets, which was very impressive as well for us. Most tackles won. We were not in that list. We actually were really down there 17, but we were down there with Bayern Munich as well. So we weren't really making the tackles. It was more of try and get the ball off them, interceptions and force with a bit of high press. Our best capacity completion was 87%, just three off Bayern Munich. Absolutely. Oh, I'd love to see that. We knew we had good passes of the ball as well. We saw them players and we saw who they were and where they were very effective. They were brilliant at what they did and got the ball down and played it really well. So great stuff to see 87 percent pass completion very high love that also we finished fourth as well with the most shots so we were proving that we are a little bit more clinical than anyone else in the side or in the league 501 shots so we managed to score 69 goals from them as well proving better than anyone else in the league as we were the best top goal scorers in the league great stuff from if you have a look at the xgs over here as well tacking we managed to get two goals per game way above the average of the league as well and we did only expected goals was 1.77 so we overachieved on that as well managing 14 games per game which is great as well and that shot on target ratio of 42 percent proving whilst our guys were more clinical than anyone else in the league getting top goal scorers as well as that as well dribbling 17 
times per game a lot better than anyone else in the league 20 percent pass completion very high as well on the league we were above average on everything fouls against per game frustrating the heck out of these oppositions running with that ball the fast agility play has been really a nuisance for us there as well and that pass completion of 87.8 percent absolute glorious as well so as you can see we had a very sketchy start as well champions league wasn't the best for us i'm not gonna lie we got knocked out in the knockout and the group stages we finished third went into europa league didn't have a great success there but the league was where we were more focused about and as you can see we started the season all guns blazing with a win against dortmund osborg and hoffenheim then we kind of went on a slouch away from home against mains and we didn't really win for a good four months there as well Bayern munich gained a 2-1 winner against us as well but well, we did start to pick up some form against Schalke lost to the Champions League again against Real Madrid and then we went on a good run beating plenty of teams in the league and in the Pokal Cup as well Leipzig a great 3-1 win away from home as well to Leipzig great stuff beat Juventus as well in the Champions League away from home yet again then we beat Stuttgart then the World Cup happened we got the full six points off Borussia Dortmund great stuff there from us we actually beat Bayern as well which was great stuff as well 3-2 and then we went on a mad run here no competition left for us so there was nothing kind of going in our way if you understand what i mean by that so there was no games midweek or anything like that it was all just focused on the league and that way we could open up six points as well off leipzig also getting some good results and scoring plenty of goals like say leipzig we got goal frankfurt we scored three column we scored four pass and bockham we scored four pass we weren't shy of goals we really weren't and this is kind of how the team played out for us so it's going to be played out for us from our center also here playing to them playmakers there I get to Hudson today. He can't get it. Kind of losing off the ball there, unfortunately. But we do put a bit of pressure on. Try and get the ball back. Try and fight for it as they move it around. Just passing it about a little bit too nicely for us. But we do put the pressure on, and Diaby is there to get that ball back. That's what we love to see. That fight and that pace as well to get into them positions. Is sick being that complete forward plays a ball over the top to Hudson Day. He can't get it there, but the introduction of that complete forward has been really, really good for us, and it's actually doing quite well. A little bit here and there, sitting up and trying get the ball but to turn it that ball playing defender gets the ball through introducing our playmates into the team shit coming back in that ball for us as well and there is a fantastic ball finding Diaby using the pace to get behind the back of him playing as that side forward and there you go an easy finish there for Hudson Adai Schick who created the play also getting involved in the final end of it brilliant play from him. another goal comes from a corner just showing our kind of dominance in there we get the loose ball from Hudson Adai brilliant play from him on the left hand side picks it up finds Baker good ball movement again finding the playmakers try and find the right ball for Pong tries to get a pass through can't but we've got to put a bit of pressure on now i was starting to see a little bit a few things here where we we're like our passing might not be as good as we actually think it is but we did kind of play it out as well waiting trying to force down the pass that's where you saw the attributes as well of not getting tackles or fouls against we were kind of waiting for the opposition to make the passes and making the wrong moves and that's what we did and that's how we got it smashed and grab here and then we get him down to 10 men take full advantage from him as well it's a great ball in for us today and that gives us a 3-2 win then get the ball good build up play there using the pace of our players as Diaby pushes forward now does very well to try and skip past Auburn there but he is absolutely phenomenal he's going to outpace Auburn every single day using the wingers again try and get the ball in all the way down with Baker there pushes on all the way across uh, it's an easy tap in for our roaming playmakers and our advanced playmakers are getting forward there brilliant stuff last one's going to come from a nice edit and jonathan tor there easily done nice 3-0 victory as well we actually shut them out for no shots on target so to keep leipzig right there 0.30 xg no shots on target complete shutout on them is a great result for us and there you have it guys that is how you build a tactic for leverkusen i hope you did enjoy it if you want to see more or any more details let me know if i'm missing details out that you want to see drop them in the comments down below let me know so i cannot miss them out for you a bit more in depth if you need something just let me know and i'm more than happy to sort that out guys you've been absolutely fantastic if there's any other teams you want to do drop it in the comments let me know what you think and let me know what teams you think would be good and if you want to see live action from me i will be over at twitch twitch.tv forward slash ticker 147 where we are doing a tier 8 to the premiership i hope to have you over there I hope you can join me it'll be brilliant to have you over there and guys thank you for clicking on this video it means absolute real to me so thank you for taking a little part of your day checking out my content i'll catch you all next time much love and bye bye